Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this new bonus lesson for volume 4. And uh, I prepared really something interesting for you to take a look at. And uh, this one, this setup was really considered to be impossible to do without the use of programming. But uh, I actually found a way to do this setup with the help of MoGraph and Expresso. Now, as you probably already guessed, we are going to build a slinky setup and uh, creating a simple slinky with one single motion, it's uh, rather easy. You can use a spline wrap for that, but if you want to create a continuous motion for that slinky, that's a little bit more elaborate, especially if you want to control the orientation and the path of that same slinky. So let's... Uh, not waste any time and dive into it immediately. So if I want to mimic some sort of a slinky motion, I actually created this spline, these two splines actually prior to recording, uh, simply because I wanted to cut down the tutorial time to some reasonable amount. So I will take this helix spline, which will act as my slinky, and I will wrap it on this arc. That's the start of the setup. So let's uh, find that spline wrap and uh, put it as a child of a helix spline. Now there are probably many ways you could uh, go with this setup, but uh, actually the spline wrap is pretty much the most simplest way. So let's build what is obvious and we will continue from there. So we'll drop this arc spline aside and uh, now we'll look at some really bad results, but we will fix that by changing the orientation and uh, should be one of the Y. So let's try Y plus and uh, now we have a slinky in its most extended form. Now bear in mind that uh, this bonus lesson is a part of uh, advanced volumes. I really don't want to spend time explaining each and every step, but uh, I also don't want you to miss some really important things because in advanced setups a tiny setting that you may miss or, uh, or something similar or wrong orientation of the axis can mean all the difference for the complete setup. So what I want here is uh, I want to create one animated step of this slinky. So if I put this to 0% then uh, the slinky will actually be gone because of this spline settings here because of this mode and end mode. And if I'm aiming to somewhat realistic look, then I will have to offset these guys a little bit. So let's say that uh, 10 here is our starting position and it would extend to 100%. Then it would uh, go all the way here to 90% so they're at the same size at the end so we will have to manually animate that so let's do just that let's uh, enter 10 here and we will decide in what time span we want that complete action to happen here you will have to use your artistic sense and sense for timing so let's say I find the reasonable timing to be 60 frames for the complete motion. So the first 30 frames, it would uh, stretch completely. And in next 30 to 60 frames, it would go into its uh, default position, so to speak. So I have to keyframe that manually. So let's do it like this. I will control click on zero on frame zero drag this to frame 30 and simply keyframe the offset at 100%. Now this guy here should be 0 in both 30 and 0. So we don't want any interpolation to happen between 0 and 30. If we add a keyframe for this value here at 100%, I really hope I haven't lost anyone. So I will and a 0% keyframe here and also here. So let's give it a shot and see what we have. So now we have a, let's say a half of our cycle made. 
we will now create another cycle so let's go to frame 30 you see it's set to zero and now the second part of the motion will be 100 percent or actually 90 percent because we don't want to lose that uh, slinky figuratively speaking and i will keyframe this 90 percent so effectively if i press play now we have really sort of a logical and natural motion this was pretty much the easy part of the tutorial now i will do something that uh, will maybe seem a little bit uh, illogical but let me explain i will mark these two guys like this so and i will right click and go animation show track and that will show me the animated tracks of those values i will switch to curve mode select both of these guys and uh, i will select all the keys now and the reason for this is uh, because i want to change the interpolation from this uh, curvy one with uh, easing in and out to linear and uh, here under a key i will change the type to linear and uh, i did it because i don't want to have any interpolation between these values here and here at the end of the spline because i will have to do some sort of a timing later and uh, if i will leave this to be interpolated uh, in a soft manner then i will have some sort of uh, irregular movement across that slider so so effectively speaking the slinky will move a little bit uh, slower then faster then it will again slow down i don't want it i want a completely linear movement with same constant speed i hope that makes sense and uh, you will see later why so now we have one continuous cycle and if we want to create a really a repetitious continuous motion of this slinky then uh, the logical next step is to clone it so let's actually group all these guys and uh, put them under cloner like this and uh, let's go in another direction let's say maybe 10 clones and we will spread them apart uh, equally something like this so let's try maybe 118 it really doesn't have to be perfect it uh, has to be decent enough let me show you an issue with this uh, immediately so if i press play watch what happens well we have uh, 10 slinkies that is uh, really funny if you're aiming for that look but we actually want one slinky to follow this uh, splines that are cloned before we tackle that problem i will just change here under transform tab of the cloner to some color maybe like this so we have much more vivid representation of those uh, slinky guys so how do we create a single guy or an illusion of a single guy well the logical step here would be to use a step effector so this uh, setup is uh, really a result of trial and error and i really am trying to streamline the process especially the thinking process about uh, how to approach things you really don't have to create everything to be real it can be fake you can cheat without a problem if it leads to pleasing results then you can cheat without a problem so now since i have an animated value here by using this uh, time offset i can offset the animation of this clone so let's try maybe with uh, let's go with 100 and see how that works and uh, there we go we have some sort of an offset between those guys let me stop this go back and uh, if you want to figure out the exact value here that is actually quite simple and uh, we will certainly see how useful it is to use round numbers in cinema 4d especially for these types uh, of setups so here 
I have 10 clones and I have 60 frames of action for each of these guys. That would imply 10 times more action time for proper offset. So 10 times 60 is 600. So let's enter 600 here. Press play and uh, there will be a slight surprise here. And uh, you will wonder why is this uh, happening? And uh, before that, uh, I'll just increase this time to 300 maybe like this and uh, expand to full time. So we have more time and uh, notice that uh, the offset isn't correct. The reason for this is this spline here. So if I just reset this spline, I will get a linear interpolation and this will also explain what I was doing before for these two guys on their animated tracks. So I want clean linear 0 to 100 interpolation with constant speed or constant movement. That is really important and can uh, mean a world of difference in setup. So now we have a bunch of uh, slinkies here and the real problem is even though one is uh, figuratively speaking animating, if we do a render, we actually will not see that uh, spline rendered. For that to happen, we have to have this uh, hair render enabled. So now if you do a preview render, you can see it renders those guys and it renders this original helix spine. I can pull it downwards because we actually will not use it at all. If I press play a bit and stop at this frame, you can see it renders all these guys and I really don't have any means to disable rendering of all these guys. If I disable this helix spline like this, both in viewport and render, nothing will render. So I don't have any means via this uh, render settings to isolate this single slingy. So that's a pretty big uh, problem, but we will solve this. And we will solve this by using a simple effector. So let's load a plane effector and Mograph is really, really powerful. And once you get the grips around these uh, generators and effectors, then the completely new world opens up, especially if you know your way around expressor. So I will disable this position and uh, I only want to use this visibility, guys. So I will enable the fall off. So box fall off. And for the size of that fall off, I will use half of this number and uh, the reason for that is uh, here under fall off or plane effector if I enter here the complete size of that object then actually I will get double of its uh, actual value because it's calculated from the center in both directions I hope that makes sense so 119 divided by 2. So let's divide that by 2 here and we will get a value of 59.5. So we can actually go with 59 round number and now I have the exact size which corresponds to distance between each clone position. So these are the clone position these little dots here now i did this because i want to have only single clone visible at every moment so here my plane effector is loaded and uh, if i enable visibility option here well, nothing will happen even if i do this inversion here and if you remember correctly from previous lessons for this effector to work in this manner, you have to change this maximum and minimum value. So maximum should be zero 
and minimum should be 100. Now, this visibility guy will work. Let me now show you what I meant by this uh, size of the plane effector. If I press play and set my effector to be inverted, so everything outside this box will be invisible and really fake this effect of one slinky but i have to be really precise you see i'm trying to find it manually and it really doesn't work so that is the reason for the size of this box so i want to have this guy covering exactly the length between the clones that way i'm sure it won't show two of them at the same time that really defeats the purpose now how do i map this time this cycle of time to this constellation of clones so this is a little bit problematic and uh, now we'll actually create a tracer object and uh, first i will uncheck this visibility so i have all the clones accessible and visible i can even hide this uh, arc it's not really necessary so i think you will be able to see some things more clearly so now we really just have to get rid of these guys that are not animated so let me stop this go back let's create that tracer because i want to create a spline that will connect all these clone positions so let's go moger tracer and uh, we'll uncheck this trace vertices and we will connect all objects and you will see a spline forming here so now if i add a, a line to spline tag to my plane effector and simply drop this uh, newly formed spline tracer is actually just a spline so think of it that way with this position value i can simply move it properly according to my animation time so if everything happens in 60 frames for one of these guys and the offset is set to 600 then from 0 to 600 we would have 100 percent value and if we have 300 we would actually have 50 percent of movement so let's actually try that with the zero at zero and at the end 50 percent and let's see how that works if that makes sense so if we hit play then this is the result we will have now actually it, this will be a little bit difficult to explain because if i check the visibility here if i turn on the visibility then actually the spline will be gone and this guy won't move at all because it has nothing to move on to but uh, really trust me when i tell you that when this action of each of these guys is over that uh, only single clone is affected by it so if we scrub slowly like this let's say to frame 60 that is the end of the action for this guy now as soon as i go a frame further this guy this first clone is uh, not affected anymore the second guy is affected so i really hope that makes sense you see after frame 120 it really passes on to another guy so let's uh, see how will that work in our setup later maybe we are wrong but we cannot know until we try now we are halfway there we only need a way for this spline to be active and visible so this uh, plane effector has something to aligned to while this visibility is checked i really hope this doesn't sound too complicated and uh, it would possibly mean that you can 
do something like that with inheritance effector. So let's create a dummy matrix object. Let me show you what I mean. So maybe I want this tracer I want to trace the cloner. I want it to trace the matrix and I want this matrix to inherit every setting from this cloner and that would mean it would inherit all the clone count and positions and distances so it would effectively trace the same spline. So let's give it a shot. Let's load an inheritance effector for that matrix and in this inheritance we will inherit from cloner we will morph the motion object completely and you can see how this matrix guy completely assumed everything from this uh, cloner but the problem is it also assumed that uh, once you enable this uh, plane effectors uh, visibility the spline won't be visible so if i uncheck this the spline will be visible so let me just show you this now the tracer is tracing and if we go to our inheritance effector under effector we can see that as soon as i reach a hundred percent value the spline is gone otherwise if you would hit play but we will enable this visibility you see it's not moving because this spline is no longer here this spline is simply not generated because uh, this plane effector hides the clone from which this inheritance effector inherits position information from this clone so it really cannot generate something that way let me just prove my point so now it doesn't work but as soon as the clones are visible the spline is generated and the clones are there so that's uh, quite a big problem i will also delete this uh, position track because i really want to have a clean start once i try to drive this by espresso and uh, as i showed you this inheritance effector really want to work now we have a completely different spline simply because this matrix is traced from the matrices it uh, generates by setting here but uh, there is a little trick we can use i will create a null object that we will call uh, expresso just to have a placeholder for our expresso tag i'm adding an Expresso tag, I will collapse this too so we have a little bit more space to work. And uh, even though I cannot do anything with inheritance effector, I can make this matrix guy inherit directly from the cloner via Expresso, but only the settings that are actually needed. So I will drop the cloner here and I will also drop the matrix object here and extract only the relevant data for creation of that uh, spline we need let's first establish what is the relevant information we want to transfer and uh, that is in this case count and this x value and we will get completely the same result so let's find count here so object properties count and here also we will find that uh, I think I will pull this up so we are just able to see those values I'm extracting. So now object properties under P position X we will extract the same values here. So here under object properties count and also transform P X and uh, I will connect the two. But I will scale this window a little bit down like this and uh, watch what happens. I'll probably have to hit play to refresh something and uh, this matrix guy is still in this grid array mode and we will put the same mode as here. So linear, let's go to linear mode and uh, if I hit play, I also have to get rid of this value here and uh, 
seems that there is something not connected properly because this position x value is not receiving the proper data and i think the issue is in this plane effector so let's disable it for a moment so here we're receiving the proper clone count and let's see if we are receiving the proper x value here and uh, we are not maybe i extracted the wrong value let's uh, try once again so let's find that object properties p x and connect the two and uh, we should have 10 matrices here let's press play and refresh the scene and here we go so some things uh, really need a tiny bit more of attention to refresh and to be taken into account i really hope that uh, you're still following this and now let me just enable this cloner so now even though i can enable this plane effector i won't lose my spline even though it's, even though this visibility is checked so now if i will play with this uh, align to spline position i will actually find where that animation is uh, actually occurring so let's try at uh, the very start like this and uh, here it is happening and uh, i can really try to find it and fiddle around uh, manually but uh, i think the better way to do this is actually to leave it to express or to calculate this position based on some parameter so let's go back and put this to zero and uh, we'll create that setup here we will run into few problems the first problem is uh, you would probably want to change the clone count at some point maybe you would want to change the orientation maybe the curvature so let's say maybe under clone or something like this and uh, let's actually transfer this value also so let's find that uh, step rotation here and uh, I just slightly pull this upward so we have more space and let's find that value so step rotation h so you can see the value I'm extracting and let's find that uh, value here so the step rotation h and uh, we will connect these guys also because we really want to show you how that uh, transfer works inside express so now if i will play with this value here my matrix object here follows so simple as that so you can have some sort of additional controls that way let me collapse this doodle palette and uh, as i was saying earlier there is um, a little bit of a problem here how you will tell this plane effector to move along that spline in regard to clone count and uh, in regard to other settings so that's a little bit uh, problematic and uh, i think the best solution and here i don't mean mathematically correct solution rather a solution that is by far easiest to understand and uh, offer some sort of a control is uh, a minimal mathematical operation here so what i want here is uh, a simple expression whereby the passing of time will tell this guy to move along this spline according to a certain speed so let's give it a shot like this and i will create a time node and i actually have to pull this quite up because uh, I really cannot show you this value well, see here time so this is the time now and uh, with progression of time i want to create a simple mathematical operation so math node really adding the nodes in a logical manner and uh, of course i want to access this position information because i want this guy to move i hope we can work this way you are able to see this so i want to drop this a 
online to supply and take here and find this uh, position value so i have to connect that in some sort of a logical manner also we don't want to forget this we want the clone count to play the role here so we want to include that in calculation otherwise you will have faulty results we also miss a node that can map one value to another value and that is the range mapper node so i'm extracting that node and what i want to map is the clone count to 0 to 100 percent of this position value here so here since this matrix object is uh, simply inheriting the values from the cloner i can use this count here or count on the cloner it really doesn't matter but uh, just for the sake of neatness now the maximum input upper value so that's the maximum value that should be the value that equals the clone count so let's put input upper here and connect the clone count and automatically in the node this guy will disappear simply because now it is controlled with this uh, count value here now i know this may seem a little bit complicated and it actually is but uh, there is really no other way to achieve such results without the use of some complex interaction of these uh, MoGraph elements and Expresso. And I think this is uh, as complicated as I will go in my training series. I think more than this would actually be applicable only to a minimum amount of viewers. And I really don't want to, to do that. I really want to bring all this closer to a general user to a regular user so let's finish our expression here so now i will control that mapping with time so time will be the trigger for this operation so let's see what happens and now i will unhide my cloner and you, you see we have some sort of a result but it's not really correct something happens uh, after and it really doesn't have time to complete the operation we have to adjust it with this mat node and this mat node is here purely for the sake of controlling the speed of this guy so i will break this connection here and connect it to this mat node and inside mat node i want to use multiplication so Let's connect this output to input of the range mapper like this. Now, this is set to zero, so no movement will be produced. But uh, as soon as you change this to one, you will see this guy moving. And actually, this fall off can be set to zero, so we have a zero fall off. And you see, this guy is. Uh, somewhat faster than this uh, animation is occurring so let's tune this down to maybe 0.5 and see how that works so apparently this uh, may seem a little bit awkward but this setup is correct the problem the initial problem is uh, in the fact that this guy let me just do that for you this guy should be initially here so it should cover this area exactly and then move according to this setup because the influence is not correct on the start so let me get rid of this doodle guy and really hope this is not too complicated but it will give you an glimpse and inside how actually programming works this is uh, quite similar to programming because you solve one problem and 10 other problems pop up so actually i will substitute this object by a null and uh, i can go to character menu and convert to null so i will get a null object exactly on the position of this guy i can create a standard controller 
via my simple script I made in Wolno 3. And now I want to offset this plane effector by exactly this value of the fall off. So it covers this complete area and this side will be touching this uh, current axis position. So let me fold this and open coordinates manager and uh, since this is the plus direction I have to enter negative 59 if I want it to go this way. So let's go minus 59 and uh, nothing will happen because it is aligned to spline. Let's transfer this tag to our null and now enter minus 59. So this should be it. So now I will make this plane effector a child of the plane null we created and by pressing play we should have a decent behavior. So how about that? This is uh, really really cool. You can play around now with these settings so maybe turn the spline a little bit in this direction and if you will have problems popping up and similar then you have to enable this option this uh, tangential i hope i pronounced it correctly and you have to find the correct axis because you see some things are not really working as expected so let's try why that should be correct uh, maybe we could hide the path we could hide the the effector here like this so we don't see that box and uh, we only have our slinky we can even hide this tracer so how about that this is as far as you can go with uh, out programming this manually i also have to point out that uh, for creating a bullet proof uh, slinky setup you really want to code it from zero but this is a really good trick mograph can make uh, tricks that are actually pretty much impossible to get in other packages so that is why it is so powerful and uh, i think this is a pretty believable slinky what you can also do you can control this arc spline maybe by uh, simply playing with these points and that slink will obey that you can see that uh, here and uh, here is the reason why i hit that arc spline i really hope you enjoy this setup because this setup can be greatly expanded and connected in bulletproof setup if we would set up this motion here by this new c motion guy and uh, i'm slowly building a c motion and uh, animation related volume that uh, will be really really good and will be an eye opener for many things so let's leave it at that and uh, i hope you